So what is the difference between these two budgets? The one on the left is a financial budget and it provides monetary information and nothing more. The one on the right provides stories that create context for the mission and ministry of your church. The financial budget on the left has a place. This budget ensures that your church is aware of its income and expenses. This makes sure that the lights stay on and the water bill is paid. This is important, but it is not the whole picture. And that's because the church is a people organization and a spreadsheet does not make apparent what the people do for the work of the Lord. You should always make the financial budget available to those who request it. A copy is available in the office are very useful words. But you should use the narrative budget with your annual giving campaign. And we'll also talk about other ways in which you can incorporate it into your into your communications plan. So what is a narrative budget? It is simply a representation of the financial budget in descriptive terms that transforms the money and expenses into a picture of ministries of your congregation. We know and research indicates that churches often don't communicate the value of the ministries they provide and the changes occurring in personal lives through these ministries. Parishioners, therefore, have a limited understanding of the use of their gifts and of the relationship with those receiving the benefits of the ministries. So the narrative budget helps parishioners understand what the, the congregation is doing, how you are connecting them to the ministries, and creating deeper relationships through education and inspiration. It doesn't matter what it looks like, as long as it talks of impact, of mission and ministry, of your congregation and the community, a story. Excuse me. Here is one example. I'm going to point out some components that are good to keep in mind. It is, oh, <clears throat> excuse me. It is always nice to have pictures. As humans, especially, we are attracted to ourselves, so pictures of people are really useful. Scripture is a wonderful component. It ties us back to the story that we are all part of. It is great, too, to include a description of the ministry, especially as it relates here to your congregation. And having an individual involved in the ministry actually write something about it from their perspective. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful part of this. It is not important what it looks like, except that it reflect your own church and your context. Some narrative budgets are glossy eight and a half by 11 magazines. Others are trifold legal size paper. And still others exist only electronically. The output is not what's crucial. What's crucial is the way you connect the readers to the story you tell. While it's true that it is not important what it looks like, I do feel very strongly that there are some things that you should not do in your narrative budget. So before we even begin, we're gonna look at those things not to do. I'm not gonna tell you what church this is or in what diocese only that I do not suggest doing your narrative budget like this. I do not suggest having expenses larger than your income without an attached explanation. And I do mean like attached right here. The first paragraph of their text, which was several pages away, does explain that they decided to operate at a deficit to make repairs. Um, from my tone, I think you already know that that's a not a good way to tell a story though. So come up with a way to include the repairs in the chart if this is what you want to do. In your expenses, looking there, one main point of the narrative budget is that you have a better way to tell the story of staff compensation and clergy compensation. When folks look at the chart and see that it's 70% of your budget, this is not inspiring. It doesn't tell them anything about the work your staff is doing each and every day to make a difference in the ministries of your congregation. And while overhead has gotten an undeserved bad rap, 
will need to talk more about how to divide your staff and clergy compensation so that it tells a better story. And building maintenance is not a story. Your building has its own story to tell, but you have to help. And while we'll need to tell these stories a bit differently this year, because we may not be in our buildings as much, your building is about the ministry that happens when people's lives are transformed through 12-step programs or the orchestra series or Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts or yoga or the thermos shelter or your food pantry. These are groups that use your space. All are part of your building story. So include the time in the category that you choose. You would include your worship experiences and Christian formation as well. And we'll talk about how to do this in a little bit. This is how you tell the story of your building. Julie? All right. Another important part of your storytelling is who knows the entire story? In many churches now, this includes your rector or vicar. If it does not, it should be thoroughly considered. You can read here in the canons that the rector, vicar, um, has the authority and the need to see all of the records of the church. Um, while a church is not a regular nonprofit, it is important to try imagining a nonprofit or something in the private sector or any organization with an executive director who does not know the source of sustaining income for the operating budget. It is an essential piece of healthy governance. There are indeed churches where their treasurer only has this information and the information is maintained on a home hard drive. We have churches where relationships in the past have gone badly, the information has been held, or where the treasurer has been injured or sick and the, the information cannot be accessed. Also, a piece of governance is that the clergy can have informed conversations with their treasurer when a single pledge supports eight percent or more of a church's operating budget. If you have a single pledge that is supporting 8% or more of an operating budget, it is a piece of governance that, should, that deserves a conversation. Stephanie and I also have many clergy colleagues who have found out about divorce, sick parents, and a host of other pastoral care concerns through the pledge numbers. We know of churches where a new rector learned that his junior and senior warden combined pledged only about $400 together combined, but they were out in front as leaders of the church asking others to consider pledging, tithing, and pledging proportionally. Some church members are concerned that if the rector or vicar knows what the pledges are, that people will be treated differently. And quite honestly, if that is indeed true, it's time to talk about, about the tenure of your rector. Um, many, many churches, um, the folk, most people in the church assume that the clergy know. It can be generational. Most younger boomers, Gen Xers, and millennials assume that the clergy knows where the income for the operating budget comes from. If your clergy does not know and you decide to move into it, there are some different ways to approach that. Um, you can put it on a pledge card as a simple little box to tick at the bottom um, for someone to opt out. It could read something like, if you do not want the clergy to know, check the box here. Um, we've had some churches that have had great success with that. They didn't bring it up as a big conversation. They didn't make a big deal out of it. They just simply put it across the bottom of the pledge card. And 
no one checked it. So the church moved seamlessly into the rector having access. Now, if the rector does have access, it does not necessarily mean that he or she is in the finances all the time, but it does allow them to notice if there is a concern, either for the governance with the operating budget or because of pastoral care. You can also see here on this next slide um, was one of my favorite photographs. I say that every time I see it. Um, on this next slide, this is a rubric from the Book of Common Prayer that instructs the clergy to make sure that um, finances are a piece of the conversation at a church. You can read here that provisions are made for the well-being of the family and that their estate is taken care of and the church is considered. So if you would like more information, if your church is not in this position and you're looking to move into it and you would like more information, Stephanie and I are really happy to have that conversation. We have it frequently. We actually just had one this week. So get in touch with us. We also have a number of resources of books, um, Cliff Christopher's Not Your Parents Offering Plate, and Charles LaFon's, I always miss the name of this one, Faithful? Fearless Fundraising. Thank you. I know it starts with an F. Fearless Fundraising, Charles LaFon's Fearless Fundraising are great resources, um, but Stephanie and I are really happy to have this conversation with you if you would like. It's 